The next chapter is called General Provisions. This is a very important chapter in the treaty. It is the chapter that sets out the, the, the nature of the treaty, describes the relationship between the First Nation and the two governments, describes the, the status of the rights under our Constitution, and also describes how uh, relations will work with other First Nations after the treaty is signed. So here are the important parts of the agreement. First, the General Provisions chapter makes it clear that the treaty lives within the Constitution of Canada. So in case anybody in the communities are worried that signing a treaty will mean that you'll lose your rights as a citizen of Canada, that there'll be ability of anybody to discriminate against you or to interfere with your freedom of expression or any of your other freedoms that are guaranteed in the treaty, don't worry. The treaty makes it clear that the human rights of all Tomac people are protected and that the uh, treaty works within the Constitution of Canada. The second thing that the, the, the General Provisions chapter makes clear is that after the treaty is signed and comes into effect, that except for one provision, which keeps track of which people have status, the Indian Act no longer applies. The reserves will be under your control. Uh, the Indian Act will no longer be there to determine how your lands can be used. Uh, how your uh, family relations are dealt with, how your property is dealt with. Instead, you'll move out of the Indian Act and into the, the system set up under the treaty and under your own constitutions. The next major piece of the uh, General Provisions chapter deals with how the treaty affects other people. And one thing that it makes crystal clear, and this is important in case any of your relatives in other communities are raising concerns about the treaty, is that nothing in the treaty will affect the rights of other Aboriginal people. So if there are other Aboriginal rights or other treaty rights out there, there is nothing that this treaty does to take away those rights, to affect those rights, uh, to harm those rights. In fact, the treaty says that if it turns out that there is a real conflict between the rights in the treaty, your treaty, and the rights of some other First Nation, the other First Nation's rights come out on top, and what will happen is that the government will then have to find some way to fix the problem that's been created so that you end up back in the position that you should have been. So when you are talking to your relatives and other communities, you can assure them that the treaty is designed to protect those, their rights. Now, uh, the next major part of the treaty deals with the whole question of certainty. Now, certainty is something that uh, there's a lot of interest in, in the First Nations, and it's the thing that deals with the question of a question of what happens to the rights we have already, and also how do we know that the government will actually respect the rights that we're given. So the overall package works this way. First of all, this treaty makes it clear that this is not like the old-fashioned treaties, uh, such as the Number Treaties or even the Douglas Treaties, in that there is nothing in the treaty that says that your rights are extinguished, that your rights are ceded, that your rights are surrendered. In fact, it makes it very clear that your rights are not surrendered, ceded, or extinguished. Next, uh, what it does do is it says that to the extent that any of your rights that you have now are different than the rights that you have set out in the treaty, um, those rights will continue but will be modified so that they will match up with the rights that are in the treaty. This is the method that was used in the Nishka Agreement to ensure that the rights match up. This may mean that the rights get larger, or it may mean that the rights get adjusted to be smaller in some ways. It also means that any of the new rights that are promised in the treaties that may not be in the Douglas Treaties or may not be Aboriginal rights are guaranteed to you. They get the same constitutional protection that other treaty rights get. Now, I do have to say something about this. Um, the modification approach, which, which the Nishka developed, there are many First Nations that don't like that, and we've expressed concerns about it as well. Uh, so there is another approach that's being developed. Tumuk is involved, along with other First Nations, in working with the federal government and the provincial government to try to implement a new approach to certainty. But that approach is not ready yet, and so we've all agreed that for the time being, we'll work with the model that's out there now, with the approach that's out there now, but we've also agreed that we will discuss and negotiate the new model if, uh, in fact, we reach an agreement that that's acceptable to be used. The next important part of the, um, of the General Provisions chapter is that it does also make it clear that, um, that the treaty is the, um, 
is in fact a priority law in Canada. What it says is that, except for the Constitution, uh, that if the treaty conflicts with a federal law or a provincial law, then the treaty prevails. So we are given an express promise laid out in black and white that if the federal or provincial laws conflict with the treaty, then the treaty comes out on top. Essentially, the way that things work is that the government and the First Nations agree to a set of rules that say how federal and provincial laws will work together. Sometimes it says that the Tumuk laws come up on top. Sometimes it says that federal and provincial laws come up on top. But there's an agreed upon process. There are agreed upon rules. And the governments have to comply with those rules. There are a few other sections in the General Provisions chapter. But for the most part, these do not um, interest anybody other than really lawyers. And uh, I won't really take you through those in detail. But many of those are designed to make sure that all of the main promises that are made in the treaty actually are effective. They're designed to make sure that the government acts in good faith. And they're designed to make sure that, um, that when the treaty is interpreted in the future, it's given a useful, practical interpretation. Before leaving general provisions, I want to talk just for a moment about the fisheries issue. Because I know that many of you worry about fisheries and worry about uh, what's happening to the fisheries. Uh, what we've agreed in the agreement principle is that for now, the fisheries issue is completely untouched. So as matters stand right now, there are no promises made about new fishing rights. And there are promises made in general provisions and in other places in the treaty that the fishing rights you have now are not affected. This includes the Douglas Treaty fishing rights, which continue as they were before. 